Hey guys, welcome to the first video here in the new tutorial uh, for artificial intelligence. And in this video, we're going to talk about the introduction to artificial intelligence. I'm going to talk about like what artificial intelligence is and how it is used. And I'm going to show you some different kind of examples. And then in the, in the in the end of the video, I'm going to show you a native based classifier. And we're going to talk about like what is a classifier and stuff like that. So this is like the native based classifier is just to like give you an, some kind of hello world uh, program um, inside of artificial intelligence. So we're just going to use some code and do some predictions on that code and a data set. And then we have created like a hello world program for artificial intelligence. So the first year, like what is artificial, artificial intelligence? And like there's an enormous amount of different kind of definitions of what artificial intelligence in, is and they're very like spread out. So like I found one here on the internet that just like this describes it, it, it pretty good, but it's still like really open to what it what it really is. So like I'll just read it up here. Like artificial intelligence, the ability of a digital computer or a computer controlled robot to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. The term is frequently applied to the project of developing systems endowed with the intellectual process uh, characteristics of humans, such as the ability to reason, discover meaning, generalize, or learn from past experience. So, like, it's kind of some robot system that has some some kind of intelligence where it can it can learn and then it can do some kind of actions. It can like learn from the past experiences and the, the actions it has done, and also just to like reason, generalize, and, and stuff like that. So it's like a, a wide a definition. But it still like gives um, a good insight into, into like what artificial intelligence is. So like in this tutorial, we're going to talk a, a lot about reinforcement learning and stuff like that. So in artificial intelligence, we're going to have an agent that is operating in some kind of environment. It could be a robot or just a computer or some kind of computer system that is the, the agent. And then the agent it's gathering information as I read it here. It's gathering information about its environment and taking 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 action based on that information to achieve some kind of goal that is given. So in in the in the example I have down here, we have the agent, the robot agent here, which takes an action in the environment. It could be like for example, like grab an apple or or stuff like that. And then the environment, we have like an interpreter that is like seeing the environment and the agent where we like kind of like um, implement our inter in interpreter that is like given a state and then the robot is taking an action from that state and then we can reward the agent from the actions it takes. So if, if it for example takes an, an, a good action, like we can give them, uh, we can give the robot a, a bigger a, a reward for taking that action and it, it is more likely to take that action in, in the same kind of state in, in, in another time. So it's more like we, the robot or the agent, it takes some kind of a actions in an environment and then we observe what is happening in the environment and we're trying to like give the give the robot some rewards so it can like take the optimal action for some given state in the environment. And in AI you also have like just sensors, effectors and environments. So in the just to like give you an overview over like what like there's so many things inside AI and is a really right wide um, wide topic. So in the last example here, we have a picture of the Ford car here, which is which is like kind of an, an agent that is operating in, in, in an environment. So it's driving around in the environment and then it has some sensors and effectors like the wheels of, of the effectors and then the sensor on top here, it has a lighter scanner. So when it's driving around in this environment, like it gets some um, feedback um, from the sensors that it can take and then it gets some feedback from the sensors and then it's learning from from those sensors and from the environment it is operating in and then it gets it get uh, then, then it gives like an action to the effector like drive to the left drive to the right stay in the lane and stuff like that so like all of these three are like put together as I showed you in the last example where we have um, like which is kind of like reinforcement learning and then it gets like rewards if the right turn or and stuff like that it was right then we give it a higher reward and we also have an example over here which is just like when we're playing chess like it's more <clears throat> we can also like have an environment which is just like a chess table and then we have and then we're like taking actions from that environment um, 
So it's like chess is like more a, a simple version of artificial intelligence compared to like um, a, a car in, in the real world because here we just have like a set environment, like it's a fixed environment and we know that like, we can then calculate like um, the, the, the different kind of like actions we need to take in the next couple of steps where in, in the real world like we don't really know anything about the, um, the future so we have to like base our actions on on some um, actions that has happened and was good in the, in the past so like in AI we just have like we try to predict something and if we say for example it's probably an apple then in AI we say okay that's an apple because it's probably an apple so it's an apple and we have different kind of um, agents where we have like the reactive agents and like the reactive agent has no memory so it just takes some kind of like sensor input or stuff like that and it outputs an action so it got no memory it doesn't know like uh, what kind of actions were good and stuff like that so it just like takes an, an input and it gives an output we also have like the deliberated agents where we where we implement um, memory which is like um, so we have like the sensor value or some kind of state here and it has like the state estimator here we give get an input and then from that state estimator we have like an output and we feed back that output to our to our next uh, like like a next prediction in our state estimator and then we also like have like a policy we are feeding our output to so before we're taking an action we are like it's, it depends on the previous um, previous outputs and also like previous actions we have taken and then we also get some rewards and stuff like that so we try to calculate the, the optimal um, action it has to take from a, a given state here so we're both feedbacking the state and the action so we get like we have memory so we we like can take an optimal action compared to what we have done and trained on and from the past and then we have like different kind of environments in, in AI and like more specific in reinforcement learning where we have the accessible and inaccessible. So accessible is like when we have access to all information about our environments. Like uh, for example, when we're playing chess, we have all the all information about uh, how um, how it works and how the environment um, is set up. Where in in a real world, um, in a car um, in a car, for example, we have to like have an autonomous car driving around like. We have we don't have like every we don't know everything about um, our environment so here you just like doesn't agent have access to the complete state of the environment we can also have like a deterministic or non-deterministic like more st stochastic so it's like random and we just say like here will the same action always produce the same result so in some case where we have a robot that trying to reach some kind of object like will will the same action always produce the same output and yeah that's that's like a deterministic and non-deterministic environment we also have like the episodic and sequential uh, environments where the episodic is is the agent's performance the result of series um, of independent one-shot actions uh, like when, where we have the episodic um, environments where we have one-shot actions so the other actions don't really like they don't depend on previous actions where we have the sequential where like an action has a consequence for the future. So if we take, for example, an action here, then it, and then the actions, um, like the action, will have a consequence uh, for future actions because it is sequential and it depends on on each other. And as I talked about earlier, we have the static and dynamic um, environment as well, uh, where does the environment change independent of the agent's actions? So, for example, in in a car, like the environment changes if we're taking like a right turn here or left turn where on um, our chess table it doesn't really like change the environment when we're when we're doing um during our, our like when we're moving our our stuff around and then we have like the last year the discrete the discrete or continuous so is the space of the environment discrete or continuous where like we for example have discrete on, on in in the, in the chess example and continuous in 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 the car example so the, like the main topics in AI is just like, and we're going to use, talk about all of these in later videos as well and going more in depth with them. So this video is just more like an introduction and like give you an insight in what AI is. And then in later videos, we're going to talk like about the main topics in AI, for example, where we have like, we need to search for something uh, in an environment and stuff like that. And we have to represent the knowledge we have all already taken and then use our knowledge to do some kind of 
like planning or learning from that knowledge or like some planning where we have to get to an object as fast as possible or in the shortest uh, possible way. And then we have natural language processing where we can like have speech to text and, and text to speech. So we can recognize uh, like natural languages. And then we have like just expert systems and robotics um, where we use like AI and robotics to have an agent that is learning from its its actions and stuff like that, where which which I talked about earlier. And then one of the last example here is just like we have different kind of uh, classifying learning problems in in artificial intelligence. And the first one is like the supervised learning, where we are we have a given input and output pairs, and we learn to predict the output uh, if faced with a new input. So in in case we have like a cat and dog um, images. We know that this input is a dog and this input is a cat and then we have labels for all our inputs and when we train our model on that data set then we learn we, we teach the, the model to predict the output um, if it's a cat or dog when we give the um, give it give it a new um, image so that's the supervised learning so we know what our inputs is and if we have, for example, here unsupervised learning, which is opposite of supervised learning, where <clears throat> we're learning patterns in the input when no specific output values are given. So, for example, if we had a data set or some some different kind of um, images, and we want to like find a pattern in, in in those images or or in the data set, so we haven't we have we haven't labels on our data. So, for example, if we give we, if we gave the model a a data set of of images of dogs and cats, but it didn't know that it was dogs and cats. Then it tried to like find patterns in those images, and then we can like try to predict an output from the pattern it it it, um, it found in in that data set. And then the last example here, which we're going to talk about a lot, is reinforcement learning, and it is how to learn to re to interact with the world from the re reinforcement you get. So like the reinforcement is the reward you get for taking some kind of action from a state in the environment. So like just to round it off, like in this tutorial, um, we we are going to talk about um, introduction to AI and basic understanding, which is like in this video, and then in in, in the next couple of videos we're going to talk about like the fuzzy logic and control, and then we're going to talk like most of the tutorial and course is going to be uh, focused on reinforcement learning and how we can use in uh, reinforcement learning, and then just to round it off, we 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 go over like how to test our AI based algorithms and control systems. So like this is like the main topics we're going to talk about in this tutorial um, and course. And just around this video off, I'm going to show you an example of the Hello World uh, program for artificial intelligence. So we're now jumping into Sublime Text, and I'm going to show you an example of how to do an AU based classifier um, on some Iris on, on an Iris uh, data set. And an AU based classifier is just like a classifier that's trying to take the probability of something and we call it naive because it, it thinks that like the features inside the data set like it, there are those uh, different kind of values that do, they, they don't um, depend on each other which is why we assume it, it is naive and then based because it's a probability classifier so in, in this example here we're trying we're going to to um, to learn our model I like to, to train our model and give some kind of score of how good it is to predict um, some kind of iris and we're going to use this Iris data set that I'll link down in the description. So if you want to, and also also link the, the code here uh, from the video, if you want to try it out yourself. In this case, uh, in this example here, we're using uh, Python, but in later videos, we're going to use C++. But it's just, this is just to get going and also to, to just do the hello world program for um, artificial intelligence. So this is more like one of the simple uh, classifiers there is in, in artificial intelligence. So I'm not really going to go in details with with all of these functions, but we're like loading in this the, the data set here, and then we're doing some conversion between stuff so we can get like the values and, and data set as we want. And then we're doing some different kind of um, calculations and evaluating our our algorithm mm, and split our data set and stuff like that. So it's just like different kind of calculations we're doing here and we're going more in depth with them um, in later videos. But for, in this in example, we're just doing our hello world program. So we go down to the beginning, uh, to the end, and we just like we load in our data set and we do the do the prediction and evaluate our algorithm so we hit control b here and we see that we did get different kind of scores here when we're when we're in a, 
evaluating our algorithm and then we can see that we get a mean accuracy of 95.3%. So it's a pretty good uh, classifier and we can we have a pretty good accuracy um, regarding if we want to predict what kind of iris um, we give our, our model. So if we just take a look, short look here on the data set, so it's this data set and we give them some kind of uh, numbers and a category of what kind of iris it is. So we have now trained our model on our model on these uh, on this data set here. So if we go into the next program here, where we're trying to use the model to predict um, to predict what kind of um, to predict what kind of uh, iris category uh, we have entered. So in this case, we just define a new record or like define new iris we want to predict what kind of uh, iris it is. So we just give it a row here with the different kind of values we have to enter. And then we use this function here, which is called predict, and we give it the model we have trained. And then the, the new um, row or like the new iris we want to um, predict what it is. So if you print this out, we can see that the iris Satorza is equal to one and Virginia one and Verticolor two. So in this case, we gave, it, we gave our model this data and it predicted uh, two. So in this case, it predicted that the, the category of the iris is an iris versicolor. So yeah, and we predicted that with like a 96% uh, probability. So as I talked about with the apples, we say that if, if, it, if, it's, if it's probably an apple, it's an apple. Like, so yeah, if it thinks it's an apple, it's, it's probably an apple. So if we just take these numbers here and we go into the data set um, again and look for, for the category versicolor here, we can see that if we just go down here, we can see like, for example, like 5.6, 5.7, 2.9, 3.6, 1.5, 1.8, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 